Hey, it's Joel. You may remember this plant and this pot. We did this, oh geez, a long time ago. I remember that this was designed by Angus of Maker's Muse because he was able to pull a file from a video game. And then my daughter and I put the plant in the pot with some potting soil. Now though, I mean, it's working, but it's seen some age and I think there's a better solution. And I'm gonna show it to you right here on 3D Printing Nerd. This has been a great plant. It's survived the not watering times where I've forgotten. Usually though, this sits on a plate right next to the sink and a window. And so this grows towards the window, as you can see. And then the plate catches any of the water that drips out. I haven't added new soil in, well, since it was potted, which means that it's still the original soil. You can see down here that some of the tasty dirt has gotten out of the holes, whatever, that's fine. That's fine, it's survived, it's still kicking, it looks great, but I think there is a better solution. Move aside, plant. Thanks to Thingiverse, we have this, a self-watering planter. And how it works is this fits within this and then water pours down the spout. Before we clean this out and get the plant moved over, let's talk about these pieces. This was printed with some printed solid test PLA. They had a low budget or have a low budget PLA. This was a test spool I got a long time ago. This was printed on the Artemis and my print settings were pretty nominal. 215C on the nozzle, 60C on the Magic Goo coated bed. I believe it was 0 0.3 layer height. Speeds were 60 millimeters per second. It wasn't anything out of the ordinary and it printed just fine. The slicer settings I could have tuned a little bit because there's some ickiness right there and it's a little hairy on the inside, but there's gonna be dirt on the inside, so I don't really care. One of the interesting things about this print and the other one as well is I printed with a gyroid infill, but I did three perimeters, five top layers, four bottom layers, and with gyroid, it had to just make these little notches in it. And it was cool to see the Delta printer doing it. It's insane to watch it go, but also, I was surprised it actually finished because every time it moved the head from one place to another, I had Z-Hop on retraction and each one of these moves was a retraction. So that little extruder was just bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It was really cool to watch. It was scary because I didn't think it would work, but in the end it did work. And that's, that's all that we can really ask for. This, this is, well, this is incredible. I just want to talk about this. This is Ariana Grande, no, Ariana Plast. Ariana Plast, Ariana Plast. And it is a red maroony kind of metal flaky something, but it's gorgeous. I'd never used this filament before. They had sent me a spool and I'd had it on the side and I just never had a chance to use it. And so I did. And I used the same settings as that one right here. The, the curvature on the bottom, this was sized up 200% scale. So the curvature on the bottom did suffer from some heat shrinkage, which, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, these were both printed on the Artemis and the Artemis itself has these three fans on the side that blow down and cool the area, but nothing that is actually precisely directed at the bottom of the nozzle. So you, it's one of those machines. It's a beautiful machine. It prints really well, but you can end up with this sort of thing. I may have been able to combat that with changing the temperature, I think. But again, I'd never printed with this before. I hit print and it went. You'll see on the inside there, there is some stringing. On the inside, there is uh, a ledge that prints. And I think it's where this sits on. But that ledge, because I sized it up 2X, I think part of the ledge, like the bottom part, wasn't supported in any way. So those strings were made, but I mean, they come out super duper easy. It'll be no problem for me to just take them out and clear them out. That's good. Now the real test, now that we're getting out these little strings that were on the underside, we need to see if it fits. I, uh, I haven't put it in yet. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. And look at that, the height is comparable right here so it shouldn't be too big for where it's gonna go. It's gonna actually hold the water down there. Oh, this should be good. Oh, we gotta see if it's watertight, don't we? The instructions do say to use some tight bond three, which is water safe glue to put in the bottom, but with three perimeters, 
I mean, this was watertight and this had less perimeters except where the holes were. I'm gonna say no to glue. If we run into issues when we add the water in a little bit, then we'll add some glue. But for now, let's go without the glue. Okay, cool. So we have the planter. We have the plant. Potting soil, potting soil, potting soil, potting soil. I'm fresh out of potting soil. So I wonder who could help me. It's Anne. This is Anne of all trades. Hi, hey. Anne. What's up, man? Uh, you run a farm. I do. And I assume farms have soil. We do have soil. So there should be a way to get this spider plant into this self-watering planter, and we should be able to then use your soil. In fact, we can. <laughs> is that so? Okay. Farmers keep a bucket of soil nearby. Is that true? Indeed, it is very okay, true. Okay, I didn't think that was a problem. We have this self-watering planter. So the idea of this is this has a little spigot. The water goes in here, the plant goes in here, and then the water can can seep up and the roots can seep out and that's super awesome so do you if it's self-watering i mean do you ever have to water it you well i believe you pour this up to a certain, certain level point. and then as it uses the water the water goes down sure and then we could add electronics to have a water sensor that goes down to a certain oh. point and then adds more water but that's a that's later Joel's problem. Excellent. Yeah, future Joel has work ahead of him. Current Joel is super happy with this current situation. Current Joel is very excited to actually put dirt in here and get the plant in here. Glorious. Because while this is cool, this is kind of cool, right? I, did you print that too? Yes, I awesome. did. My buddy was, in did Australia. Did you have a video about that? I did. My buddy in Australia actually took a digital file from a video game. Oh, no way. What video game? I think it's from Fallout. Oh, excellent. I think excellent. it's from Fallout and then chopped off the top of the warhead and I made a planter out of it. There you go. Kind of cool, right? Yeah. But it's time for the new cool. Time for the new cool. So what would be the best way to get this plant into this pot using your soil? It kind of depends. Is this a, is this a desert plant? Like, what do you know about spider plants? I know that it exists on the kitchen counter near the window. Perfect. So generally speaking, when I'm transplanting something, I will actually soak it in water previous to transplanting it. However, this is actually a very easy scoop, so we should be able to get all the roots and everything in kind of one fell swoop. Okay. And so we can basically just grab it out of here. We just You're gonna do it? You're just gonna grab it? I mean, is that, do you not want me to do no, it? No, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm very okay with you using your expertise. To... Well, my expertise is not really related to house plants. The thing, the <laughs> Yours is way more than mine. The crazy thing is, so like people ask me, you know, cause we have, for organic farm here and people are always asking me like oh how do i have a garden and everything like that but really plants are super difficult to kill actually so you can kind of get away with just about anything and as long as we keep what's called the root ball intact which this is the root ball okay. then we'll be pretty good so let's put a little bit of the new soil in there okay okay it seems to be holding is that a good yeah. base or do we need more yeah we want to we want to make it so that we don't have to disrupt the roots. So like the key to success here is that we're going to try to keep the roots in as that's probably good. And then we'll put this down in there. Go for it. And also, let me just know, let you know that you are getting to take away so many of Howdy and Bella the little donkey's poops with you in this soil because donkey poop is good for plants, right? I mean, it absolutely is. So now, again, just trying to keep the root ball intact. When we add water, this is all gonna smooth down a little bit. Oh, but okay. But we're kind of we're kind of good there, and then we'll we'll put it into its into its next piece, and yeah, perfect. And then we'll just like dust up the rest of this. So incidentally, when you're transplanting plants, you actually want to keep as much of the original soil as possible. But the nice thing about using the soil that we're using, um, my own Anne of All Trades branded um, potting soil, is that you're going to be adding a little bit of nutrients. Because if you had potting soil previously in here, potting soil actually doesn't have a ton of nutrients in it. Oh, it doesn't? It's, it's actually, potting soil is actually sterile. I didn't know that. And so um, this is hopefully actually going to help your little spider plant get a little revived. But you also want to be super careful with it because if we give it too much nitrogen, which is what happens when you use like manure stuff, which is why we're not using straight compost, we're using like a nice little blend of, of soils here. Um, if you do too much nitrogen, you could actually shock the plant. So this plant is probably oh. going to look a little bit sickly for a couple days. No, sicker than what I've made it, I'm sure. Um, 
<laughs> but anyway, once, um, once it's had a chance to kind of like get used to its new pot and everything like that, it should perk right back up and hopefully it'll have you know, some nice new growth on it soon. Another thing you could do if you were really concerned, like if this was a very, very leafy plant, you could actually cut back some of the longer growth on it and then give it like a little jump start so that it wasn't with that little root ball trying to support so much growth back here. Oh, so it should be, because usually it grows big and the leaves really like to, so like I mean, they will just out. hang out and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so should it not do that? No, it absolutely should. Just if we're, if we're transplanting a plant oh. and we want to give it, like if this thing gets super, super sick after we've transplanted it, you can cut some of the longer foliage back so that it doesn't have to support so much stuff from its newly disturbed root system. I see. But now it should, I mean, it should be quite healthy now. So don't worry about it. But if it is sickly after this transplant, cut you can back. cut back some That's of the That's good foliage. to know. Wow. And call Annabelle Trades 911. Plant 911. <laughs> I love it. I'll add water at home because I want to verify that it's watertight. Glorious. And then if it's would not, hate I to can have fix that tip it. over that in the car also. Be, that'd be terrible. Thank Perfect. you. Hey, no problem. Appreciate it. Uh, Anne is known as Annabelle Trades. If you want to find her anywhere, where can they go? You can basically find me anywhere online on Annabelle by searching for Annabelle Trades. You can find me on Instagram at Annabelle Trades, YouTube, Annabelle Trades. Twitter, Annabelle Trades, and on my website, AnnabelleTrades.com. Wow. We'll put links down in the description as Sweet. well. Okay. Well, I'm going to take this home. Good luck with your spider plant. Well, good luck with your kittens. Well, I will now. I hope no woodworkers were watching this because the fact that we just got soil all over my saw stop is uh, very noteworthy. I'll help clean it right up. <laughs> Whew. That was a lot of fun hanging out with Ann, Annabelle Trades. We actually posted some stuff to our Instagram stories as well. So if you head over to Instagram and go to Instagram.com forward slash Joel Telling or Instagram.com forward slash Hannibal Trades, you'll find it. Here it is. This is it. This looks, this looks good. It's been transplanted. I know that we need to add some water. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a pitcher, but I did find this bottle of Kings Bay Silver Rum. Rum is good for plants, right? And you know on these bottles, this little this little thing right here? That's what I think of that. Bottoms up, plant. Boy, this plant is thirsty. And then I think we should probably put some at the top, maybe? There we go. Wow, this plant was thirsty. It took a whole handle of King's Bay Silver Rum. Now the final thing to do is to check to see if the rum has leaked out. I don't see any rum leakage. I think this is called a success. I can now put this back down on the kitchen counter next to the window where it will receive some sunlight when there's sun here in the Pacific Northwest. It's also right next to the sink, which means it's really easy to add water to this little spout. Did you really think I put rum in there? No, I gave the plant water, fresh H2O. It was a joke. It was a joke. Don't give rum to your plants. Give rum to me. Wow, this was fun. This actually worked out. Big thanks to everybody that joined us. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that bell. I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five.